Two jurors dismissed from former President Trump's New York campaign finance trial. The judge partly blaming the media. Arlene Richards brings us the details. President Biden gets endorsements from members of the Kennedy family, all while Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is threatening to spoil Biden's campaign. Iris Tao is on Biden's campaign trial in Transylvania. More Haitians are illegally crossing the southern border into California instead of Texas and Florida. The latest numbers as Haitians flee chaos at home. 28 Google staffers are out of work today. The company fired them for protesting a cloud contract with Israel. Don Ma reports. Florida voters will decide on legalizing marijuana in November. Daniel Monahan breaks, speaks with an addiction specialist about the factors they may be considering. And security concerns may force a change of venues for the opening ceremonies of the upcoming Olympic Games in Paris. Welcome to NTD Newsroom. I'm Stephanie Cox. On the third day of his campaign trip in Pennsylvania, President Biden is receiving endorsements from the Kennedy family. That's as a third party wildcard, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is running a campaign that could tip the 2024 election to former President Trump. Joining us now live is NTD's White House correspondent, Iris Tao. Good afternoon to you, Iris. What's the focus of today's event in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia? Good afternoon to you, Steph. So at this event right here in Philadelphia, over a dozen members of the Kennedy family endorsed President Biden. And that's happened on stage just now, about an hour ago. And that's a rebuke to one of their own, RFK Jr., the independent candidate who's running against President Biden and whom President Biden's campaign worries could take votes away from President Biden and instead tip the elections toward former President Trump. So today, both Biden and Kerry Kennedy, one of Robert F. Kennedy's uh, junior sisters actually were directing their fire not really on R RFK Jr. himself, but on the ultimate target, and that's former President Trump. Watch. I can only imagine how Donald Trump's outrageous lies and behavior would have horrified my father. Daddy stood for equal justice, for human rights, and freedom from want and fear, just as President Biden does today. And President Biden again doubling down on portraying former President Trump as a threat to democracy, citing some comments by Trump that Trump said were often taken out of context. Watch. And he calls for another bloodbath when he loses again. Your family, the Kennedy family, has endured such violence, denying January 6th and whitewashing what happens is absolutely outrageous. Meanwhile, RFK Jr. responded to his family's new endorsements for Biden today, saying that he's pleased to see this event as it shows how people just like he and his family can still be divided in opinions, but still love each other. And so that's a message that he's trying to promote of, quote, healing America. And that's according to a tweet he sent out today. Meanwhile, former President Trump has called RFK Jr. a radical left, citing his viewpoints on issues like abortion and climate change, but still as can Kennedy's polling at around 13 percent in a recent Fox News poll. It proves that he can still be a threat to both candidates, or like himself put it earlier last month, saying that he wants his campaign to be a spoiler for both Biden and Trump. Steph. Certainly a wild card in this election. And Iris, tell us more about what President Biden's been doing in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Right, so today marks actually the third day of his three-day swing in this battleground state of Pennsylvania. He's really trying to appeal to the working class American voters here. For example, on the first day in Scranton, he tried to contrast his tax policies with Trump's. And yesterday in Pittsburgh, he also tried to call for tripling tariffs on Chinese steel. And that's in a bid to show himself as a tougher on China candidate than former President Trump. Steph. All right, Iris Tao in Pennsylvania, thank you so much. Two of the seven seated jurors have been dismissed in the New York criminal trial of former President Trump. Our legal correspondent Arlene Richards has the details on the plot twist. 
On Thursday, two of the seven selected jurors were excused. Female juror number two expressed concern that she couldn't be fair and impartial after the media revealed certain aspects of her identity. She said family, friends, and co-workers contacted her to find out if she was on the jury. Judge Juan Mershon scolded members of the press in the courtroom and urged them not to reveal physical characteristics of the jurors. He later ordered the press in the courtroom not to report on prospective jurors' former employers. Male juror number four was excused after the prosecution raised concerns that he might not have been truthful with the court during questioning. Prosecutors said they found an article about a person with the same name who had been arrested in the 1990s for tearing down political posters, and that a relative of the man may have been involved in a prosecution agreement in the 1990s with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which is prosecuting Trump's case. Juror number four was questioned Thursday at the judge's bench, but it is not known whether he confirmed or denied either incident. The dismissals reduced the number of jurors who have been seated to five. Twelve jurors and six alternates must be seated to hear the trial. A growing number of Haitian migrants are crossing the U.S. southern border, and they're taking the long route, traveling almost 3,000 miles to California instead of taking the shorter 830-mile voyage to Florida. According to Border Patrol agents, they encountered more than 2,500 illegal Haitian immigrants just last month. And those numbers have continued to grow since last October to just over 8,900 people. The island nation's government has been thrown into chaos since the organized prison break of thousands of gangs who are now said to control most of the nation's capital of Port-au-Prince since March. More than 13,000 illegal Haitian immigrants crossed California's southern border last year. And now moving from the U.S. southern border to the northern border, people are paying almost $7 for gas. A social media post on X from one user in Surrey, British Columbia, shows Canadian gas prices at U.S. $7.75 a gallon. It's only $4.67 per gallon in the nearby border town of Blaine in Washington state. According to AAA, American drivers are spending $3.67 a gallon, meaning Washington has some of the highest prices in the nation. And Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is back in action on Capitol Hill today, this just a day after the Senate rejected articles of impeachment against him. It also comes a day after senators discovered that the alleged killer of nursing student Lakin Riley was released into the U.S. as an illegal immigrant. So this is your policies in action, Mr. Secretary. A criminal is permitted into this country on grounds flatly not permitted, flatly contradictory to the statute. He commits a crime against a child and then he gets a work permit. He gets a work permit. Then in February, he commits the heinous crime against Lake and Riley. Is this a record that you are proud of? Um, uh, Senator, um, you've misstated some facts. I have read from the parole file, which you have said you don't recall, don't have, you miscited. I'm reading from it. It is right here. Mayorkas appeared as a witness today to answer questions about his department's budget request, but most Republicans focused on his handling of the southern border. Republicans argue that Mayorkas is a big reason why over 7 million people have entered the U.S. illegally under the Biden administration so far. And we'll have more on today's hearing in our evening news at 6 p.m. Eastern time right here on NTD News. Next up, sweeping gun legislation in Maine. Lawmakers approved new rules today, nearly six months after the deadliest shooting in the state's history. The October 25th shooting in the state killed 18 people and injured another 13. The legislation includes background checks on private gun sales, 72-hour waiting periods for gun purchases, criminalizing gun sales to prohibited people, and a bump stock ban. The bills passed despite the state's strong tradition of hunting and gun culture. Gun control advocates say red flag laws could prevent mass shootings like the one in October. Gun rights activists argue that such regulations essentially circumvent the Second Amendment. Marijuana may become legal in Florida. 
The state's Supreme Court gave the green light earlier this month for voters to decide on a constitutional amendment. But are the potential dangers of the drug being downplayed? NTD's Daniel Monahan speaks with an addiction specialist about some possible pitfalls. The measure is titled Adult Personal Use of Marijuana. It will appear on the November ballot. If passed, it would grant adults 21 and older the right to possess, purchase and use marijuana for non-medical purposes and enshrine access to it in the state constitution. Addiction specialist John Paul says although recreational marijuana use initiatives may be well intended, people aren't seeing the full picture. The licensed psychotherapist says percentages of THC, the psychoactive compound in cannabis, have skyrocketed from around 5% in the past to the current 90 to 95% available today. The result, according to Pulse, an increase in psychotic disorders. People are experiencing what's called cannabis-induced psychosis, um, which is causing them to have psychotic breaks. For some people, um, they don't know exactly why, but the research indicates about half go on to develop a psychotic disorder like schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, which is a very severe persistent mental illness that requires lifelong management. Pohl says such psychotic breaks involve a detachment from reality. People most often have um, what are called persecutory delusions. So they believe that somebody is out to get them. It's the easiest way to describe it. So, you know, the FBI is out to get them. Somebody is trying to hurt them. The addiction professional says there's also an increased rate in panic attacks. People are um, experiencing severe anxiety, winding up in the hospital. They believe they're having heart attacks, essentially. Um, but it's a panic attack from cannabis. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of research to indicate that is mostly attributable to the increased rate in THC. Pulse says cannabis addiction shouldn't be made light of either. The addiction specialist said it is often not taken seriously due to harder drugs like heroin, cocaine, or methamphetamine. But Pulse says the hallmarks of addiction are there. Increased tolerance, desire to use more, not stopping use despite uh, external consequences or at times internal consequences, uh, and just continuing to pursue more to get the same desired effect, and most importantly, withdrawal symptoms. Um, they become irritable, they have increased anxiety, they have difficulty sleeping. Some people even report experiencing cold sweats. This isn't the first attempt at legalization in Florida. A previous initiative fell short in 2021. Recent polls suggest strong public support with at least 67% of Floridians in favor. But securing the required 60% of the vote for constitutional change is no easy task. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. A school bus burst into flames along a busy highway in New Jersey. Today, fire and guest investigators are trying hard to find out why. The vehicle was traveling on the Garden State Parkway in Upper Township when it caught fire yesterday afternoon. Firefighters spent two hours putting out the flames. Fortunately, all 10 students and the driver were able to escape. No injuries were reported. And Americans across the country can call 911 again, and the mystery is solved as to why some weren't able to last night. Although the incident still raises concerns about the security of key communication systems. In Las Vegas, South Dakota, and parts of Nebraska, the issue was a new light pole installation. Service provider Lumen reported a third-party company working on the light pole cut a critical fiber. In Texas, the Del Rio police said it was an issue with a major cellular carrier. Authorities said they could see call attempts and would call back. Some urged residents to either text 911 or call using a landline. When we come back, Google fires a group of workers who protested the cloud contract between the company and the Israeli government. And while the Olympics Games are in just over three months, Concern over security threats are pushing French President Emmanuel Macron to rethink where the opening ceremony will be held. It was set for the Paris River but could be replaced by Plan B. That and more after the break. On the loss of coordination in my legs, I'd trip over my feet, end up flat in the concrete. Dr. Panani to me was godsend. Oh, I can't.
I didn't have to make a massive lifestyle change. I noticed today that I could sit and stand up without a cane. I would have to give it excellent and above my expectations. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. They're just young people, hungry, homeless, and vulnerable. Abused youth often feel safer on the street. Now, more than ever, that's the most dangerous place of all. Covenant House is helping young adults facing homelessness. We're providing safe shelter to thousands, but the need is overwhelming, and no young person is ever turned away. Please call or go online now with your gift of $19 a month to help a young person. You'll provide safe shelter, hot meals, and medical care. Your gift will show them they're loved. Homeless young people are afraid and alone with nowhere else to turn. You want to know that there's somewhere you can go that's safe. So the Covenant House did that for us. Please call now with your gift of $19 a month. We'll send you this blanket as a reminder of the comfort your gift provides a young person tonight. Please don't wait. Your gift is the lifeline a young person needs now. Call the number on your screen or go online to safeplacetosleep.org. Thank you for saving precious lives. Fresh sanctions imposed on Iran from the U.S. and the U.K. That's over concerns about the recent attack on Israel and the potential for escalated conflict in the Middle East. The U.S. Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control has targeted 16 individuals and two entities. They were involved in the production of drone engines used in the attack on Israel. The U.K. is also targeting Iranian military organizations and individuals connected to Iran's drone and ballistic missile industries. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has stated that more actions will be taken against Iran in the future. World leaders are urging caution to prevent a further escalation of violence. At the same time, Israel has pledged a response to the Iranian attack. And Google has fired some of its workers for protesting the company's cloud contract with Israel. Here's NTD's Don Ma with today's business brief. Thank you very much, Steph, for having me today. I want to start off with Google. It said today that it had terminated 28 employees. Uh, this is after some staff participated in protests against the company's cloud contract with Israel. So the Alphabet unit said that a small number of protesting employees entered and disrupted work at a few unspecified office locations. Uh, Google had said that it concluded uh, individual investigations resulting in the termination of these 28 employees uh, and as well would continue to investigate and uh, will take action if needed. The Google workers, on the other hand, who were affected, called it a flagrant act of retaliation and said that some employees who did not even directly participate in the protests were also among those Google that fired. Uh, protests at uh, Google, though, uh, are not new, Steph, because in 2018, we've seen that workers have successfully pushed the company to shelve a contract with the U.S. military. 
All right, moving on from that, the U.S. dollar's dominant reserve currency status is likely to endure. And this is partly because uh, even the most talked about alternative, the Chinese yuan, falls short as a credible challenger. And this is according to Morgan Stanley in a report today. Now, let me just mention rivalry with China, uh, Russia's war in Ukraine, wrangling in Washington over the U.S. debt ceiling and rising debt levels have put the U.S. dollar status as the world's dominant currency under scrutiny in recent years. Uh, so in a new report exploring the dollar's reserve status, Morgan Stanley said it did not expect the currency's dominance to change soon. Uh, it noted that the dollar's influence in the global economy across a range of economic and financial metrics remain strong. And the concerns about the U.S. fiscal outlook and the persistent use of economic sanctions by Washington uh, perhaps could motivate some countries to seek alternatives to the dollar. But, you know, nevertheless, it's going to be a very difficult task, according to Morgan Stanley. That's all from me today, Steph. Back to you. Thanks, Don. Next up, a salmonella outbreak is prompting a multi-state recall of a kitchen staple from Trader Joe's. The Food and Drug Administration says there are two reports across seven states of people becoming sick, with one person being hospitalized. The product you see here is called Infinite Herbs Organic Basil. It was sold in 2.5-ounce clamshell containers from the beginning of February through the first week of April. Trader Joe's says 29 states as well as Washington, D.C. are impacted. The produce was purchased from a farm in Florida. And the Olympic Games are in 99 days, and it's not certain where the Olympic ceremony will be happening. It was scheduled to take place along the Paris River, the Seine, but security concerns are pushing the French president to rethink his plan. NTD's France correspondent David Vives speaks with an expert in security crisis management who says the threats to security have significantly increased in recent years. The opening of the Paris Games would be a first in the history of Olympic Games. Rather than parading in a stadium, Olympic athletes are supposed to sail down the Paris River on 140 boats. 300,000 spectators are expected to watch the parade. However, security experts have raised concerns about the vulnerability of an open-air event. The former Paris head of police said this plan was crazy. CEO of Corp Guard and crisis security expert who worked with French authorities David Ornus says there are just so many scenarios where things could go wrong. In fact, the spectrum of threats is going to be extremely broad and extremely polymorphous. You've got the terrorist threat, of course, but you've also got the social climate in France, which is the recent form of crisis. Since the mass shooting at a Moscow concert hall claimed by the Islamic State last month, France has been on its highest terror alert. The 45,000 police and military officers deployed will also face challenges such as potential drone attacks or cybersecurity threats. You've also got the risk of cybersecurity, cyber attacks, and in fact it's this accumulation of risks that means the threat can be considered sufficiently high for a certain number of measures to be taken, notably the French president thinking of implementing a plan B. The ambitious plan might be scaled down by organizers, either by reducing the number of spectators to 220,000 or by finding another scenario. So no one could have foreseen when we planned these Olympic Games that the international situation would deteriorate. No one could have predicted the crisis we've been through or the riots we had, for example, last year, that we should be afraid. We should nevertheless be concerned about the situation, remain vigilant, expect the worst and hope for the best. Macron says other places might host the opening ceremony, such as the Trocadero in front of the Eiffel Tower. David Vives, NTD News, Paris. And to close things off, some fun news. A puppy is born Key Lime Green in the Key Lime State. Take a look. 
Take a look at a golden retriever puppy gone viral for being born a surreal shade of key lime green and in Florida, the key lime state no less. Little Shamrock became the standout star of the litter when owner Carol De Bruyler of Golden Treasures Kennels says she was stained in the womb by a green bile pigment called biliverdin, a rare but not unheard of occurrence that can result in the temporary coloring. Knowing dog lovers everywhere would be green with envy, De Bruyler took to TikTok to tout the tinted top to the tune of millions of views. But like viral fame, this key lime color fades with time, and now more than six weeks old, Shamrock has all but lost her iridescence, but thankfully not her vivaciousness. Wildlife experts who are celebrating the birth of a newborn condor used cutting-edge tech to get a sneak preview ahead of the hatching. Concerned about the chick's position inside the egg, a team at San Diego Zoo Safari Park used CT imaging technology to peer inside the shell with a 3D look at the baby bird before its birth. The concerns were relieved and the condor chick was successfully hatched, further bolstering this critically endangered species. And as one life begins, another ends, sort of. Actually, it's just a retirement. After years of viral leaps and bounds, Boston Dynamics internet darling Atlas Robot is hanging it up to make way for a new and improved model. So what better way to celebrate the intrepid droid's succession than with a highlight blooper reel of it busting its bionic butt? Ha! For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. All right, thank you for watching NTD Newsroom. I'm Stephanie Cox. We'll have more stories from the U.S. and around the world. Join Tiffany Meyer for the NTD Evening News at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific.